Welcome everyone uh, to the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm Kelly Walmsley, your host today, and I'm joined by Dr. Tree Duong. Hey, Tree. Well, thanks for having me, Kelly. Your current role is um, technical manager at Carry Taste and Nutrition, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm a technical manager for the uh, animal nutrition team in, in North America. Okay, great. And you've been there two years after a long stint in academia at Texas A&M and poultry science, right? January will be, this coming January will be three years. Wow. Yeah, 21, 22. Yeah, three years. Wow. Okay, time flies. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Wow. So Carrie is, has really, I mean, there's a a lot of different um, sectors that we kind of interact with in a day to day. And I know you have dogs, I have dogs. And so kind of touches um, probably all of us a lot more than what we know uh, in terms of products that they're affiliated with. But speaking about from an animal health or animal production animal standpoint and poultry, enzymes would be um, the biggest um, area, right? Yeah, yeah. enzymes is probably what we're most known for for right now. But, uh, you know, Carrie is, uh, we we do have other uh, technologies that we're bringing to market and um you know that's yeah i don't know so do you have um and so with your role as technical manager what are the different products that you're working with mostly right now um well i support our entire product line across all species right now and so um but mostly our focus is you know uh, our biggest market right now is, uh, as far as that needs technical support, is really uh, enzymes and poultry, and also uh, some of our gut health products. Um, as far as okay. important, but um, you know, we are working to bring other products to market, and um, I mean, we, you know, our our liquid smoke product that we're uh, hoping to launch at IPP this year is uh, that's probably the most uh, fun project I'm working on right now. The 2023 Arkansas Nutrition Conference Technical Symposium is brought to you by Kerry. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate. Let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates improve nutrient utilization. Gut health technologies differ by type. Innovative ways to feed and a novel technology that will light your performance on fire. See us August 29th in Little Rock. So liquid smoke, how does that interact or how does that, what does that look like interfacing into the animal health um, area? We're launching our liquid smoke product as a, um, under our uh, gut health um, product line. Um, And so if you think about liquid smoke or think about smoke in general, humans have smoked foods to preserve them for thousands of years. And so we know that smoke itself has a lot of uh, antimicrobial activities. Um, and you know, if you look at the, the, I guess the components of liquid smoke, the compounds present in it, you know, they have a lot of, uh, it's, um, there's a lot of antimicrobial activity and, or natural, there's a lot of natural antimicrobial activity and also a lot of antioxidant activity. So, uh, most of the research that we have in, in live animals, uh, thus far is, has been done in, in broilers under conditions of uh, both acute and subacute necrotic enteritis. And, um, we've observed, uh, improvements in body weight gain, feed conversion, and uh, reduce mortality as well. Okay, that's that's interesting. And so, do you um, do you know what it t- if that smoke then uh, transfers into the bird? And you know, when you eat those birds, <laughs> what they taste like? Uh, well, you know, considering that we've done all the studies under uh, you know BSL biosafety level two conditions, you can't you're not allowed to taste those chickens. Um, I'm guessing that uh, at the doses, the inclusion rates we're using. Um, the, the effect on taste of the animal is probably going to be negligible, but, um, you know, that's something we need to explore at one point. Uh, you know, you're probably more likely at those inclusion rates to potentially get flavor in eggs. Um, but, there, you know, if you're looking to flavor eggs, there's probably easier ways to, to do that than, you know, feeding the, the flavor to the chicken in the first place. So um, this liquid smoke uh, product that you all are launching at IPPE, is that the same kind of liquid smoke that I would just buy at the supermarket or is there any kind of difference with it? Um, I mean, the, it's basically made using the same process. Uh, you know, we, mm-hmm. we basically make all our liquid smokes using the same process and then fractionate them, uh, pull off the components that, that uh, you know, have the activities that we want. And so... Um, you know, when you think about it, it's, you know, it's just condensed liquid smoke. And so that's, uh, for us, that's a really cool, I think it's a really cool story. Um, 
you know, where no one's cutting down trees specifically to make liquid smoke. We're using a waste stream, uh, hard hardwood uh, sawdust from the sawmill industry. We are pyrolyzing that, um, condensing the vapors off of that. Um, yeah, so you know the process. It's very you know we're um, we're uh, you know we're using a waste stream from the sawmill industry where no one's cutting down trees specifically for for this process. We're using saw hardwood sawdust from the sawmill industry from uh, essentially uh, furniture production. Um, we're we're pyrolyzing that, collecting off the vapors, and then condensing that. And then uh, you know any of the non-condensable the gases that are non-condensable. Um, those are used to uh, uh, fuel the process. Um, the tar that's pulled off of it as well uh, is also um, used to fuel the process. And then even the char that's left over, um, that goes to uh, charcoal production. So, you know, it's, um, it's uh, I think it's a really cool upcycling story. That's uh, kind of exciting yeah. for the company. So what are kind of the next steps? Um, I know you said big launch at IPVE, but what are the next steps with this type of um, product and where you need to get in the, into getting this into, you know, including this in the diet um, commercially? Well, and, you know, I think there's, uh, again, you know, the, a lot of the um, benefits of feeding and using liquid smoke. I and mean, obviously these are things that we, uh, we've, uh, similar benefits we've gotten from the human food side and application as well. I mean, not, not necessarily health benefits, but, you know, food protection, food preservation. So I think there's, uh, you know, we're interested in looking at, um, you know, what, what, other, what other problems the, the industry is facing um, that we can mitigate. You know, uh, certainly food safety is a concern. Um, so, you know, uh, hopefully, um, if, uh, you know, we can get some approval for that, we were hoping to run some studies evaluating the ability to, in, whether or not uh, liquid smoke is able to inhibit salmonella in the animal. We know that it inhibits it, you know, on a Petri plate and test tubes on food, but, you know, if feeding it to the, we're going to be able to see similar effects, um, in an animal. Um, uh, so again, you know, food safety, but I think also, you know, we know that, uh, Liquid, well, we know that smoke has a uh, anti, um, you know, preserves food. It has activity in, in uh, inhibiting path or inhibiting parasites. So, you know, there's some other applications down that route we were interested in looking at as well. I guess one thing, though, too, um, that's interesting is so you're, you know, we're on poultry nutrition, Black Belt. And um, one thing that we haven't talked about is the fact that. Uh, Tree, you're not a nutritionist, right? <laughs> I'm not a poultry nutritionist, but, you know, I might argue I'm a microbial nutritionist. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think, but that's a, it's a neat aspect to kind of bring in because, and and I agree, you are a microbial nutritionist. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, you know, you know, tying in, um, thinking about how important the microbiome is. And then, you know, uh, that we're trying, we have all these different products that are out there to impact bird health and bird performance. Um, but the, you're taking, you have the mindset of kind of bringing in your, your basic and molecular chemistry backgrounds and micro biology backgrounds, and then bringing it into application to kind of, um, to, it's really just taking things from a little bit of a different approach from what somebody like maybe with my background and just poultry nutrition would uh, traditionally take. And so I think that's an exciting approach. I don't know, I've always been a little bit different uh, in every sort of job that I've had compared to, well, let's start over again. Um, you know, I actually, I don't have the traditional, you know, poultry science background. You know, I, um, my you know, undergrad degrees in biochemistry, my grad, graduate degrees in uh, functional genomics. I did that working in lactobacillus um, genetics. And uh, you know, my, I did a postdoc at Washington State working in Campylobacter genetics. And so that, that's kind of how I got into poultry. And um, I think just you know, bringing, I think bringing people of different backgrounds together, um, different uh, you know, scientific backgrounds, you know, helps you, gives you the ability to ask questions that uh, you might not otherwise ask. You know, a lot of the, you know, when I was at the university, well, um, you know, I worked a lot with Craig Sufal and I worked a lot with uh, um, Jason Lee, you know, and, and I think we did some really cool work there. And, uh, you know, with US, the USDA unit there did a lot of work with Alan Bird as well. And I think, again, you know, we, we was a, who's a veterinarian. And so um, I think just, you know, putting those together, those different um, disciplines together, I think we were able to do some pretty cool work that, um, that I'm, I'm pretty proud of. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's really neat. So, well, kind of, um, I guess, wrapping up again, then um, appreciate your time um, today. And it's always good to see you um, and, and see a familiar face across the screen. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at least in person at IPP. I know definitely I'll see you there. So um, excited to learn more about your liquid smoke products there too. Yeah, come on by our, our booth. Uh, I forget the number off the top of my head, but um, yeah, come on by the, the carry booth at uh, IPPE. You know, you can, uh, um, our smoke our, our smoke expert will be there uh, for sure. So, you know, you'll be, you'll be able to ask him questions if he's available and walking around, but uh, we may have some uh, samples or, or, you know, not, uh, Ooh. not, um, not show and tell, but show and smell samples. Ah, you know, get, you know, get, I like get, it. Get, get, a, get your hands on and, and you know, get a whiff of. Very cool. Well, thanks again. And thanks everyone for listening and, and tuning in and however, whatever platform that you're tuning in. It's a poultry, poultry nutrition black belt podcast. Say that three times fast <laughs> um, and appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.